Welcome to the computing workshop. I am the mad computer scientist and this is my workshop. Today we are going to talk about this on popular demand because I was asking around on forums and so on what uh, the next topic should be and also within bits uh, and the conclusion is that we should talk about PCEM, uh, the PC emulator which unlike DOSBox, which some of you might be familiar with, uh, probably are, uh, is not emulating a virtual runtime environment like DOS is, uh, meaning it's a wrapper emulation to, to, to run particular game, in particular games. PCEM, on the other hand, is, a, is an actual hardware emulator, emulating a bunch of uh, PC hardware uh, as accurate as possible, uh, which gives much greater compatibility than DOSBox because it's actual hardware emulation uh, and it also uh, uh, acts as a real machine, which has its own peculiarities like you have to install drivers uh, for the emulated hardware, you have to have quite a lot of horsepower to run uh, the later stage machines, the PCEM will emulate uh, a lot of different video cards, sound cards and and and, uh, and PC hardware. Uh, for the later one, it can go from basically an 8088 IBM PC up to uh, um, a Pentium MMX 200, 233 megahertz PC with a Voodoo accelerator card and it will emulate all of these pieces of hardware um, as accurate as possible, meaning it will try to replicate the actual hardware itself, its timings and its operation, uh, which is quite a complex task. And this is a very impressive piece of software, which is uh, much more accurate uh, than what DOSBox is in general, uh, naturally, because it's pure hardware emulation uh, and not you can also use it to test various types of setups. You can use it to pre prepare compact flashcards uh, for use in actual machines, for instance, because you can trust that uh, the behavior in PCEM is like the real machine. But on the other hand, it's much uh, more tricky, much trickier to set up. Uh, it will also behave like the real machine. So you need to go through all of the hoops needed to run uh, an actual uh, machine, the actual hardware, um, also on, on, on the virtual uh, machine, which means installing the operating system, formatting the hard drive, virtual hard drive. Uh, you need to, you cannot mount uh, like you can in DOSBox, uh, you cannot share the file systems, you have to create ISOs or, or, or open up image files. You need imaged disk files, we will look at those later on, but let's first uh, you, you go here, so the first step, the target for today is to set up this, an emulation of a, a very popular machine, a 5170, an IBM 5170 AT, it's a 286 uh, machine, and the PC-AT, uh, in, in as accurate way as possible. PCEM, by the way, is very, very accurate, it's an accurate emulation. Uh, and it's a very useful tool. So first you go uh, here to pcem-emulator.co.uk uh, to, to get the software and download it uh, either for Linux or for Windows. Uh, I, I use the Windows version as you can see. Then uh, because it's uh, a machine uh, emulation, a hardware level emulation, you will also need whatever is needed to set up the actual machine, meaning you would need BIOS, you would need BIOS files, uh, dumps of the BIOS of that machine, uh, because PCM will emulate the BIOS exactly, you will need uh, any setup disks, uh, installation media, things like that, that an actual machine would use. So I have gone here to minus zero degrees, first of all, to get the 5170 uh, setup disk. You can probably copy this link if you want to replicate this, uh, because here is a, a link. We also have it for all you BITS members, we also have it in the archive. Uh, but 
I will just show this link uh, for non-BITS members where you can download uh, the setup and this is a 360k five and a quarter inch floppy containing the 5170 diagnostics software so we'll need that to set up our virtual hard drive just like you would on a real machine um, so now I have downloaded this into a folder where we have this uh, and this is what we're going to set up uh, in, in this session we are going to set up PCEM, which I have downloaded and extracted the latest version. Uh, we will set up IBM PC DOS 5 on this, and we will install, we will use WinImage to actually access our virtual hard drive, which we need to do to be put software on it, because unlike Do DOSBox, this one, like I said, PCEM cannot mount like that, it cannot share the file system, it will behave like the actual machine, which needs that, means that you need tools to open up this exact replica of the, of the hard drive. Uh, uh, it's a sector-based uh, virtual hard, hard drive image file which you need to open up with say win image to put software on it it's a bit trickier if you want to install windows you need an iso of that and so on and so forth if you want windows 95 or 98 um, but um, i've prepared a bunch of things this is the setup disk uh, for the 5170 which we'll need just like on the actual machine this is the ducktales game which we'll use to test that this is working this these are disk images image files of pc dos 5 i will not tell you where to get these um, but you can find them if you look around uh, also bits archive has a bunch of operating system images i don't know if we have these but we probably do uh, then uh, because pcem like i said is is a, a, a hardware emulator it will need these and they, these are a set of ROMs and these are not ROMs like Nintendo games or, or whatever that was a common internet thing to call any ROM dump uh, ROMs and, and uh, I think it's a, it's a NES game or something these are actually ROM dumps of, of biases and firmwares that is needed for accurate emulation because PCEM will emulate the exact hardware uh, specification and timings and it will also emulate uh, to do that it will use the actual BIOS so these are BIOS files or for computers um, these are firmwares for say video cards and so on which it will th these will are taken from actual uh, actual hardware uh, and it will use those for maximum accuracy uh, but you will need to find uh, a, a package of, of, of the ROMs the dumps that you want to use uh, so also won't tell you where to find those uh, but you could probably find them if you look around a bit uh, so now we can start uh, PCEM once we have it downloaded you will see we can go to PCEM and when we start the application uh, you get uh, this is called configuration manager here you have a list of your machines and in this list you can add uh, more machines and you can start your virtual machines in here by pressing the play button you can change the settings we were we are going to prepare the AT class machine so we will without further ado we'll get started so you get a feel for this uh, how the software works so to add a machine you can click the new button we will call it AT286 we press OK here we can see a bunch of machines that we can choose from uh to create the, these are types of machines and these are based on the bias files that we we had we copied into our roms folder i'll just show you where that one is here in the pcem folder you put your roms uh, the bios dumps and here we can create a bunch of different machines uh, and we want this one, the 286 IBM AT, which is an exact emulation of the actual 5170 AT 
the, uh, then you have uh, at the upper end this one I'll just show you this one because this is really cool if you have enough horsepower you can actually go up to a 233 megahertz MMX uh, PC at 100 uh, percent accuracy at accurate speeds and you can select a 2d card and you can click voodoo graphics and you can see here you can even emulate the voodoo 2 uh, and the, you, you can select your your texture memory sizes and so on and this will not be a the, this isn't a wrapper per se this is a this is a recompiling emulation so you would still need drivers for the the, the voodoo graphics card and so on you need to install 3dfx drivers and so on if you have like windows 98 or something like that this is a very accurate uh, voodoo emulation uh, and and it actually is quite quite good speeds uh, but you need uh, quite a lot of horsepower and as you can see you can select a bunch of video cards here and here on this tab with the audio you can select a bunch of audio emulation which is also very very accurate and hardware level emulation so it's not it's emulating the card itself so you need to have any setup software and so on you need to have disk images of those not and and with disk images I mean not just folders you need to have actual raw image copies of, of floppies that you can mount to install any drivers or something like that or ISOs are, are workable if you have uh, CD images uh, because like a real machine this works with actual floppy images or ISOs not mounted file systems uh, here you can emulate a bunch of various control uh, controllers including the actual protocol of the CH flight stick pro which is excellent for me I'm a huge flight sim fanatic so this emulation is very very good for me uh, you can have network cards now as we have the pen sim class we can select more network cards here which includes the Realtek RTL uh, you need drivers for those of course uh, seeing as this is not unlike DOSBox, this isn't a virtual runtime environment, this is an actual hardware emulation. Um, so let's go with let's let's go with this ATPC then and we select that this is an 8 megahertz 286 and it wants to give us 256 kilobytes of memory to start with. Let's say we make that I want 640k of RAM because I'm a bit crazy like that. Lots and lots of RAM, 640k. Uh, so, and I want this one to have an IBM EGA uh, based on the real BIOS. And here we can select a bunch of screen monitors that it will also emulate. You can see here we can have mono, we can even have an amber screen. Let's pick an amber screen because that's cool. So let's say this is a 200. This is a 256K EGA card on a monochrome amber screen. Here you can set the bus speed of the of, of the of the video card. So you can select uh, on an 8-bit bus, or slow or fast 16-bit bus, or you can even go full uh, VESA local bus VLB emulation if you wanted to but I don't know if there were actually any EGA cards available on VLB um, sound we will say that this machine has an adlib sound card uh, I don't have the driver disk images on this machine for that but let's just do that just for fun and here we have the so you have system you have video you have audio and you have IDE uh, or MFM because it can also emulate MFM um, discs but let's say we have standard IDE here so we will pick an IDE uh, hard drive and we will create a three and a half inch 144 meg because we are going to use those and we will also have five and a quarter inch 360k disk drive at floppy drive floppy drive 2 which we will use to run the diagnostics disks because this is a, that's an image of a uh, 360k five and a quarter uh, disk um, floppy disk and now we will add a hard drive and so we set it up like this and then here you can select what you want 
in, in terms of floppy disk drives here, you can also have a CD-ROM. Let's say we have a CD-ROM in this machine, uh, just for fun. Uh, and then you need to add a hard drive, and this is a virtual hard drive file, which you can create. Uh, let's pick a type, and this is the typical IBM types that you probably seen sometime before. Let's say we have a, um, for fun, let's say this is a 30 megabyte, that's a little low, but uh, yeah, never mind. Let's say this is a, let's say this is a 30 megabyte hard drive so we have 462 and 8 so we will set up a type 7 drive like this and oh yeah sorry this is stored in a let's call it test hard drive like this and you can save it and this is will now become an actual sector by sector virtual hard drive image that the system will use. Uh, so now we can also use WinImage, which we'll do later to open this up and add software. But now, now we can start this machine. So we can press OK. But this machine will not have any operating system on it. So let's power it up first. And you'll see here, now it goes through uh, the BIOS startup. And now it emulates the Amber screen, as you can see here. Uh, and it ha counts to 640k of RAM, which we said it we wanted. And now this 100 something, 100% here means it's running at 100% accurate speed. So it's now it's actually running at the actual speed of an 8 megahertz 286 AT machine. And uh, now we booted into BASIC. And why did we boot into BASIC? Because this is what the actual machine does in real life. If there is no operating system, it boots from the BASIC ROM, uh, which we now did, also in emulated form. So now we are in IBM BASIC, uh, because we have no operating system. So as you can see, unlike something like DOSBox or something like this, this is an actual emulation of the full machine, which behaves just like the full machine uh, would. Uh, which is useful in many cases. Uh, takes a bit more horsepower to run, but it, it the the behavior is very accurate. Uh, now let's uh, shut down the system. And uh, yeah, we don't need to be asked again. Uh, we want to change our monitor now, so we don't want to have the mono. I would just wanted to show you that, but we will have color ECD, so we want a color screen instead because uh, that's much nicer to look at. Uh, and now uh, we need to set it up like we would set up a real machine. So without further ado, remember we downloaded the disk images of, of, of the setup program that the actual real machine uses. So we will once again power on the machine, we go to disk and here we can set a and B floppy drives. Remember, B is our five and a quarter inch drive. A was configured as the 1.44 megabyte, three and a half inch drive. In CD-ROM, you can load images. This is how you install Windows 95 or 98 or whatever. Uh, by the way, you need an ISO file. Uh, the, if you can find software, and which you of course can, that can create blank uh, ISO uh, images and fill them with files from your um, uh, from your um, hard your the host machines hard drive that's also a way to copy software onto the machine like it would be on a real machine like a real Pentium machine with CD drive you could it would be like burning a CD and putting it in the in an actual machine so like you can as you can see also unlike DOSBox for instance this behaves more like the actual machine now if you wanted to set now I'm running this as no in a window uh, because uh, the the uh, because uh, it looks uh, horrible, the stretching on this monitor is horrible otherwise, but you could go to full screen, you could also set vertical synchronization, you could set under video, you can also choose your rendering uh, driver, uh, you can set some stretch modes, you can also have custom resolution, you can fiddle with these settings to get a good uh, full screen resolution 
it's even better if you I have an actual uh, monitor like an old VGA CRT which can actually synchronize properly to the modes that this this machine will the virtual machine will output because remember like the real machine it will output uh, the actual it will try to output the actual video modes that the real machine would uh, so now without further ado let's change this into the diagnostics disk sorry not the a drive we need a b drive uh, so we go in here and we change that and then we we do control alt delete to reset let's reboot um, let's reboot you can also you can also click you can also press control alt delete on the keyboard when it's captured and we'll do what the real machine would do which is reboot so now okay now it works uh, so here we have the diagnostics that we needed uh, so we will do a four which is the setup um, so we'll select the setup like on the actual machine whoops uh, and then uh, the current date is 1919 that's not good it's actually 20 it's uh, 04 23 you americans and you your weird your weird date formats let's just say that this is 1919 i don't really care <gasps> um, and that is correct so we type yes and then we will have okay so now it has detected that we don't have a fixed drive c so we want to set this up yes uh our no this is not correct so we say we have two diskette drives and that is a I, and it's actually 1.44 but it's a high capacity drive so we say yes B is a low capacity drive uh, it's double sided 360k so we answer 1 and we press enter to continue and now we this looks better uh, so this is not correct because we have a C drive so we have one fixed disk and remember it was type 07 and this is correct yes remember we looked at the type of the drive you can see that in uh, we'll show you later uh, and this is the primary display and this one we said had base memory size is 640k which is the maximum ram size so that is correct expansion memory size uh, uh, oh, sorry we don't have any and now we can save this setup and now we can press enter to we can also eject let's eject drive a and drive b and then in sh drive a we will insert now we can insert pc dos uh, which is IBM PC DOS version 5 we insert disk 1 these are disk images like I said these aren't just folders these are actual raw copies of these floppies which I will like the ROM so I won't tell you where to get these um, unless you're a bits member because then we can probably find you a copy of these disks but these or images but the images can be readily found readily online uh, if you need them but you need raw images of, of, of the disk files so now we press enter and stand by while the system resets like it says with our install disk mounted in drive a so now we should hopefully boot from from pc dos install disk maybe so we do the ram test and it's actually as one at 100 percent accuracy it's also as slow as a 8 megahertz 286 which <laughs> uh, it's not very fast uh, so now we should boot from the floppy and we do so we are in IBM DOS and we go to 
set up and you can see now that it detected our hard drive and it wants to install to a hard disk. This is excellent because this means that we set up correctly. I will show you. Remember when you do a, a hard disk file in the in, when you're setting up a new machine, remember to to always make a note of the type that you choose because like these IBM setup disks there are plenty of old machines using setup disks uh, because they don't have a, a, a BIOS setup in, in ROM uh, and they will ask you uh, for the type because they don't have auto detection the AT doesn't have doesn't auto detect the drive it wants you to tell you what type it is and in this case it was type 7 uh, which is why you can choose different types from a drop down in, in PCEM which is quite uh, good uh, because that means you don't have to remember the uh, you don't have to remember what types there are and, and, and what kind of settings uh, they have uh, you can see it in the drop down so okay I'm, I'm from Sweden and I want a Swedish keyboard I want to install the hard drive and let's do this and yeah that will be fine and yeah I want all the space for IBM DOS so let's do that and now it will reboot again because it will format it will it will create the partitions uh, on the hard drive so we will do a standard setup of PC DOS 5 on this machine uh, and now as I said this is this is um, this is uh, not a, a virtual uh, environment runtime environment like DOSBox is this is like the actual machine which means that uh, of course it will behave exactly like the actual machine so it will emulate the hard drive access speeds are the same as the actual machine the EGA card will behave the same uh, <laughs> that also goes for the floppy drive which is why this will take a while so I will just uh, install this and I will make a small cut so we are back and now setup has completed I cut out the boring part of copying the files uh, remember when you're switching disks uh, it now it wants me to remove all of the floppy disks so on disk this disk in this case means floppy drives and this means CD-ROM so here we can uh, we can eject drive A and we eject drive B so we make sure we have no floppy drives in and when you want to put a new, like when you're running an installer from a disk, uh, disk images of original software, you may you want to switch disks. Uh, so you can change drive A to another, and you can change drive B by using these menu, th this menu. Uh, you can change to different image. So that's how you insert like disk two and three and four five six etc but now we should have an install of IBM DOS and now we shouldn't boot into basic so let's try that let's see if this works we press enter with all disks ejected from the drives um, this means that the system should reboot into IBM PC DOS which it does and we are now in PC DOS and now you can see something you don't see every day which is the IBM DOS shell this was now we can capture the mouse but we don't have a mouse driver installed so we have to do this now it's running at the actual speed of the machine so now we can look at the DOS the DOS shell was IBM's uh, way of making navigation in 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 DOS uh, simpler uh, you can also exit from this one because let's not use that and get back to here uh, the standard DOS prompt uh, but that came with PC DOS you can see now that this behaves like the real machine at accurate speeds and we now have an install of PC DOS uh, which is excellent so in DOS we also have a full installation of DOS this is also different from something like say DOSBox which is just a virtual runtime environment which is not a full uh, it's not DOS uh, whereas this is whatever you install on it be it uh, Unix system or, or, or in this case IBM PC DOS or OS2 or whatever it's actually it's like a real uh, machine and, and 
the real full installation of the system. So here we have PC DOS 5 in all its uh, glory. Um, so let's run the mem command. We can see that we have 600 the largest executable size is 569k so now we have a working dos computer that we can actually use we can even run we can run basic like this if wanted to uh you can run programs on it uh, but now how do we get software onto it well that's a different story altogether uh, so I will show you how to do that. Let's shut down this machine. Uh, and like I said, you can either use it as a real machine and get disk images. You can get actual floppy disks and, 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 and image them into raw images, which you can mount and uh, as you saw on the disk menu uh, and use. Uh, given that you have the correct floppy type set up in uh, here, um, in the virtual machine uh, or you can uh, download software which is what most people do they download software and they extract it to folders uh, which then has to go into this machine somehow and like in a real machine that's quite tricky but unlike a real machine here we actually have the hard drive as an image which is a, a benefit to us because now we can open this image here you can see by the way what I was talking about the types uh, so here you can see what this means and now uh, we, we, we can now use a program called win image you can also use this program to create the disk images I, uh, I'm referring to the, the raw images of uh, of floppies. Uh, this is also useful in preservation for a different reason because you can use WinImage for instance to create uh, copies or raw images of actual hard drives uh, as in hard drives used in an actual PC and then use that same hard drive in a compatible configuration within PCEM and get very good accuracy. Uh, so you can use it to create an image of some data, uh, a hard drive that you don't want to lose and then you can keep working in PCM and a similar setup. I use this uh, professionally actually for several clients. Uh, so this is very, very good. Uh, but I will show you WinImage. So WinImage can be downloaded from... I know... So WinImage can be downloaded from from here, winimage.com, uh, and this is the, this is a, a shareware. So you have to pay for it after 30 days. You have a 30-day evaluation. I don't really know how because my version is actually on day four, even if I had it installed for a very long time. So I don't know how these 30 days are actually counted. But anyway, uh, so you have to download this exe file and install it and that will give you this software here you can if you have uh, um, you can create here you can create an iso image like i was talking about that's one way of getting software across to to your pcm virtual machines you can create an empty iso image and copy files onto it and save it then you can mount it as a cd-rom if your target machine has support for it now the at uh, will not know what to do with that file system so that won't work you can also open up uh, you can also create images from uh, from floppies that you have if you have an a a drive or you have a floppy drive on your PC, you can use that to 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 make a raw copy of that image. Um, so you can create uh, images, or you can open images and edit them. Uh, this is a very useful tool to have. I will now show you how to get software onto your hard drive image because that's what you normally want to do, PCM, because you download something. In mis in, in my case, the Ducktales games that I game that I was want to run. Uh, so I've downloaded that. So now I need to open this hard drive file, which I have. I have a bunch of uh, drives here, but I think I put it in uh, test. 
maybe. This is our test hard drive. So now you can see that it figures out it's connected. It has a hard drive partition, which is 30 megabytes and it's FAT fat uh, partitioning. Uh, so now you can see if we click here, okay. Now it opened up the hard file, the actual sector by sector hard file that we have that was created by uh, our IBM DOS 5 installer. And here we have the folder. So now we can do, now we can actually treat this as an actual uh, as an actual uh, drive uh, which means that we can inject so we select image and we select inject or inject a folder in our case we need to create a folder first so i will create a folder and i will name this folder games like this and now in this folder i will inject a different folder and in this case, I will go to test and I have my DuckTales folder here and I want to inject these 18 files. So I click yes. And now I have the software on my hard file. So now when I boot up the 286 virtual uh, virtualized machine again, it's going to see this. So now it, this tool uh, wrote this and this is how I normally add software so with this you can manipulate the image and you can inject a file or inject a folder meaning software that you downloaded you could also extract things from this uh, and this is also useful if you have created a raw image uh, of, a, of a disk on some other machine and you want to extract uh, from it uh, we can also uh, yeah, so we can do a lot of things with Win Image. This one is also if you have a, um, you can also save an image to a an actual floppy if you have downloaded a raw copy of a floppy disk or read disk, which means you read from a floppy. As I was saying later, if you have some old installer software or something on actual floppy disks, you can uh, you can read them uh, and then use them in PCEM. Uh, but in this case, what we want to do is put, we want to use inject. We want to use the inject feature uh, to inject into our hard file. Uh, so now we did that. And now, now we, ha we can save this file and then exit. Uh, so now going back into uh, PCEM, now we will start our machine again, the, our AT machine that we were using. And now as we are booting into the machine, our target is to play DuckTales, which uh, is one of the best games ever. And if you don't think so, you're out of your mind. Uh, this game should actually run just right at this uh, speed uh, of this machine. Uh, it runs uh, too fast on, on most systems uh, this this is a very speed sensitive game runs too fast on most systems it also runs slightly too fast even in DOSBox normally but with this uh, accurate 286 8 megahertz emulation should be just fine uh, it's also an EGA game so it, it will be look excellent on this uh, emulated video adapter and here you can see our new games folder that we created so now let's do this um, so now let's go into our games folder and i remember i just injected ducktales the files right into the folder which of course i should have created a subfolder uh, further subfolders so you would have games than ducktales when using win image uh, before but never mind uh, let's just start the game now we have uh, the game on our uh, at 5170 the virtual one um, so let's let's start it up and I don't have a joystick so I press no uh, now it actually runs at the actual speed as you can see by the 100% oh that's a nice uh, piece of speed emulation uh, very very nice I hope you can hear that sound because it's very accurate I would say speed is 100% so it's the actual speed of the image to be essentially okay yeah uh, so this uh, 
so now I will choose easy because I'm a coward okay so now uh, as you can see the game is working fine and it's running fine now we could start fiddling with the full screen settings and things like that to, to get okay, the, the speaker emulation is very accurate but this rendition of the DuckTales So now you can see that it works. That I think will just, just quit this game because that tune was driving me insane. Uh, okay, so um, as you can see, uh, this uh, PCEM is a, a much more accurate way of running uh, emulated, uh, emulating a PC system because it emulates not like uh, DOSBox by emulating a virtual uh, runtime environment but by emulating uh, all the hardware layers on, on as accurately as possible also on a, on, a, on, a, on a very accurate timing so this this means that it's much more it's much closer to using an actual system and if that's what you want then PCEM is your go-to tool because it will give you the accuracy uh, and it will give you the feel of, of, of running the actual machine and it will actually behave like the actual machine and not a virtual uh, runtime environment it will behave like an actual uh, hardware setup which it will emulate uh, quite accurately. Uh, this means that you can rely on it for uh, certain tasks like software development and so on uh, for older systems. It's very good for that. It's also of course very good for gaming if you are after uh, the accurate feel of a game on a particular hardware setup uh, as accurately emulated as possible then it, this is the tool to use. And now hopefully you have a slight idea of how it works and how to set it up and how to get software onto it which is a bit trickier than with say DOSBox but as you have seen WinImage is a tool that may even be worth paying for if you intend to use PCEM a lot or if you just want to image your, your old floppy disks because that's also an excellent use for WinImage for making raw backup copies of your old floppies and that uh, concludes uh, today's session uh, so now you can experiment with PCEM maybe try a Windows 95 installation maybe even try a Voodoo setup uh, you can use WinImage then to also copy the uh, folders of, of drivers and so on directly onto your virtual hard drive and then reboot and then install all the drivers that you need for the for, for the virtue for the hardware that you set up uh, to emulate in PCEM uh, so now you can experiment for yourself uh, and that concludes uh, today's uh, session so thank you